76 years after the Battle of the Bulge, we travel with World War II researchers Joey van Miesen and Florent Plana to the Ardennes in Belgium to take several then and now comparison photographs. In this episode, we will be focusing on the town of La Roche in the Ardennes, where several incredible photos were taken during the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge is a term that for history buffs is inseparable with the German counteroffensive against the US front lines in Belgium and Luxembourg that started on December 16, 1944. The offensive was intended to stop the Allied use of the Belgian port of Antwerp and to split the Allied lines, allowing the Germans to encircle and destroy four Allied armies and force the Western Allies to negotiate a peace treaty in the Axis powers' favor. However, things did not go according to plan, as stubborn resistance from American troops all over the Ardennes front and a quick reaction by both British and American troops halted the advance. As a result, it had formed a bulge in the Allied front lines. By taking these then and now comparison photographs, we hope to form a direct link with the past as we explain the differences between 1944 and 2021. The town of La Roche didn't see a lot of combat during the Battle of the Bulge. The strategic crossroad town is situated in a valley, making it hard to defend. From December 20, 1944 and January 10, 1945, the Germans used the town's road network. The Americans knew of its importance and hammered the German troops who used the town with their artillery. Furthermore, on December 26 and 27, 1944, the American High Command decided to bomb La Roche, destroying most of it and killing 114 civilians. Finally, on January 11, units of the British 51st Highland Division managed to recapture the town with slight opposition and link up with the American troops. Today, La Roche is a center for World War II history with many monuments including two tanks, a tank destroyer and a World War II museum. It's a kind of a surprise that we came through here, La, through uh, La Roche and uh, I just want to show you some then and now pictures that have been taken here in the town. I've never done them before to be honest, uh, so it's going to be something interesting for both of us. So you can come with me, we're going we're gonna to go to the first site. So Flo, I've come here in this town since I was 8 years old um, for traveling with my dad to World War II sites. We always stayed in the hotel right here, Hotel de Luxembourg. And I was surprised when I found this photograph last week in the big Bell of the Boot then and now book um, that you can buy on Amazon. But I was so surprised because I, I know this uh, photograph. I mean, I know the, the building and the photograph. It's been taken right here in front of the, on the side of the Hotel de Liège. And you can see a couple of Sherman tanks parked in front of the Hotel de Liège. And practically, it's the buildings, everything is the same. So on the photographs we see like three Sherman tanks and I believe they are from the 51st Highlanders and you can see the British officer in front of the tank his head is sticking out which is kind of fun and it's funny because it, it, it corresponds with the story you know the, the direction that the British troops advanced into La Roche in uh, January so definitely one of my one of, amazing picture and I'm happy that I'm gonna take a then and now shot now The 1st Battalion of the Black Watch Regiment was the first unit to enter La Roche from the west. Private Stanley Whitehouse, a member of B Company, recalls, quote, We occupied La Roche village, littered with German corpses from an artillery shelling. In the sub-zero temperatures, the bodies looked fresh and still alive. We were ordered to deal with SS men still holding out, end quote. In front of their eyes, two platoon commanders were shot by snipers. The German resistance was taken care of. At the same time, the US 84th Infantry Division was able to reach the town from the north. A day after the battles in La Roche, the link-up between the British and American troops in the center of the village was photographed and at the exact same spot you can see a little plaque with the picture. So Flo, as you can see, the photograph is taken from right here and you can see the building right there. You can see the three British guys standing in front of the corner and then the Americans, the three American soldiers are standing right here in the street 
everything is it's still like almost it's still the same the house the window is the same so look we just took the picture right here but there's another photo of american soldiers american soldiers walking right here through the street la roche was very badly bombed uh in, during the battle of the bulge and we took just that photo right here uh with the guys meeting each other exactly behind them there's another photograph that's been taken and you can see one two three four five six american soldiers walking through the street right here and you can see how much has changed because the only building that is still standing is the school the école école communale that's from 1876 it's not being hurt by the bombing so far um, but it's a wonderful picture and we're gonna see it later on we're gonna see how much destroyed La Roche actually was during the Battle of the Wood it's crazy Our friend from the previous videos, Bob Konings, provided us with this photograph of the church. I had never seen it before and was amazed to see how much had changed over the years. For the last side, we have both film and photographs. What most people don't know is that on January 14, 1945, three days after the British liberated the town, Elements of the 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 17th Airborne Division came into town and met up with a patrol of the 24th Cavalry Recon Squadron. On D-Day and during the Normandy campaign, the 507th was attached to the 82nd Airborne Division, but upon their return to England, they were permanently attached to the 17th Airborne Division. One soldier in the footage is still wearing his M42 jump jacket. So Flo, I have a little surprise for you. I know that you interviewed some veterans of the 17th Airborne uh, Division in uh, the United States this year, I believe, right? The beginning yeah. of this year? Yeah. So on the photographs, we can see the castle in the back and also uh, the, World War II, the World War I monument in a film footage that they shot of those guys. And I think you're gonna like it. So I believe actually the picture is taken at the monument, but there's houses there so that it's hard to do it then and now, but what we can one element that we can definitely see is the castle in the back. So if we look at the guys that are standing, I believe on the road right there at the monument. And we can see the guys at the 517th meeting with an armored guy from an armored unit. You can see in the back the building is from 1949 and all those other buildings behind it, it's all new. I believe that the soldiers on the photo are standing on the rubble from all the destroyed uh, buildings uh, here and well the town was so heavily, heavily destroyed because of bombings that you know that picture was taken right here and so they are standing on the uh, rubble of the buildings uh, the town was so destroyed and uh, that's why you know it's visible like the building is from 1949 that's it's a clear visible thing that this town was so destroyed because of that I would say that in that part of you know, uh, Europe in 1945, almost all airborne units are wearing M43 jacket. And this guy is actually still wearing an M42 jump jacket. I mean, I know it's not a big detail, but... What about the rest of the guys? What? No, which is... Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, you can see that he's wearing, like, actually, he's got an M1 Garand. He's got, you know, a holster with, like, a pistol, you know, on the side. He's still wearing his cockroach, you know, his jump boots. A uh, lot of airborne, they have the M43 jacket. So this guy, I mean, honestly... What, what, about, what about those guys? Hold on. You see, that's what I'm saying. Those guys right there, they are wearing the M43 uh, jacket, you know. And are they part of the airborne? Because yeah. I see uh, the American flag here, you know. A lot of guys in the airport. That's Lawrence Becker on the on the. That's Lawrence Becker. Yeah. So yeah. there are 17 airborne, 507. Oh, you know that this guy is actually wearing a British jump jacket. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know that. A smoke. The, the, yeah, that's crazy, right? That's crazy. <laughs> so this guy is wearing an M43. You know, M43 jacket. You, you see the American flag on the right, 
shoulder. Those guys are all wearing M43, you know, jacket. And this guy is still have the Montonier, as you call that in French. Oh, yeah. From the, from the, yeah. Yeah, the chin strap. Yeah, from the jump. But uh, which uh, 17 Airborne, you said? 507 PIR, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because those guys were already involved in the jump, uh, you know, in Normandy on June 6, 1944. And the other elements of the 17 Airborne were never involved in any jump. The first jump for the 17 Airborne would be varsity operation in March 45 over the Rhine River. The 507 was the only regiment, you know, that had experience in combat. La Roche is one of our favorite towns in the Ardennes. It is a cozy town with a lot of World War II history. In this video, we did not really cover the story behind the visible monuments, but I still hope it sparked your interest to visit this place. Please let us know if you'd like to see more videos about the British during the Battle of the Bulge. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and tell us in the comments below which photograph was your favorite. Make sure to follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram and become part of our community. Thank you for watching, may we never forget.